Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. Today we'll discuss how to run a winding resistance test using a Trax without a TSX303. Let's get started. To access the winding resistance app from the home screen, you can select the apps option. You should be able to find the winding resistance app under the power transformer tab. Let's take a look at the winding resistance app. On the top left, you will see a shortcut that takes you back to the home screen. Here you can access the test report. Here you can uh, access the apps screen. Here you can view the test settings for the winding resistance test. Here you can see information about the instrument. Here you can view the connection diagram for the measurement that's selected. You can select this option to save data. By selecting this option, you can create a new winding resistance test. Here you can see the test results in a graphical format. You can select this option to delete test results. Here you can enter comments or take notes. Here you'll see a shortcut to the demagnetization screen. Uh, at the end of the winding resistance test, we need to make sure that we demagnetize the transformer core. You'll need to hit the play button to start the test. Let's take a look at the upper half of the screen where we need to enter some relevant information before we can start the winding resistance test. Here, you will need to enter the vector group and you will also need to select the winding that you want to perform the test on. You can select either individual windings or you can select both windings and run a dual winding resistance test. Here, as you can see, the high voltage winding is selected. Here, you will need to enter tap information on the winding that is selected. Uh, that will include selecting the tap changer type and entering the number of taps. Here, you will need to select the DC current source that you're going to be using for the test. You can choose from three options, 1 amp, 16 amps, or 100 amps. The 1 amp source and the 16 amp source use the same pair of output posts on the tracks. You'll also need to enter the test current. The optimum value for the test current would be somewhere between 1 to 10% of the rated current for that winding that you're testing on. You'll also need to enter the winding temperature. The winding temperature technically is the average of the top oil temperature and the bottom oil temperature. You would assume that the winding temperature uh, would be, winding would be at the same temperature as the oil because the winding cools down rapidly once the transformer is taken out of service. The top oil temperature can be obtained from the top oil gauge and the bottom oil temperature can be measured by measuring the temperature on the tank by using a, a, an infrared scanner. If you do not have a way of measuring the bottom oil temperature, then you can just put in the top oil temperature over there. But it's important to make a note of the temperature at which the test was done because uh, resistance is temperature dependent. This is the test section in which you can see the test data. Let's look at each of these columns on the table. The leftmost column shows you the connection for each measurement and each connection uh, corresponds to each phase of the winding that you're testing on. So A phase, B phase, C phase, and it keeps repeating. On the second column, you have the tap position at which the test is to be done. And then the next four columns uh, is where the test data appears. And that includes the current at which the test was done, the measured resistance value, the stability level of each reading. Uh, the reading takes uh, some time to stabilize because of the inductive effect uh, of the winding. So it's important that when the readings are saved, they are stable and not fluctuating. Variation is a value that you get for each set of three readings taken at a uh, tap position. Uh, and that variation is in expressed in percentage. Um, and uh, uh, it basically, through that value, we determine how close the readings are with respect to each other. Let's look at the test settings for this test. Let's go over the test parameters first. Under test parameters, you will see DMAG warning. 
uh, if this warning is enabled, then you will get a warning uh, if at any point you try to exit the Winding Resistance Test app. Uh, the warning uh, will basically warn you to run a demagnetization uh, test before uh, before exiting the uh, Winding Resistance Test. If the auto stop is enabled, the tracks automatically stops uh, um, and saves the measure, stops the test and saves the measurement if the readings are stable enough. The temperature correction uh, is disabled over here. If it's enabled, then you can correct the resistance readings to a reference temperature. Auto winding switch is grayed out. It will be available if you use a TSX switch box. You're not using a TSX switch box in this video, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be grayed out. Connection order settings have two options. You can either test by tap or you can test by winding. If you are running a test on a winding which has a DETC, the preferred selection would be to test by tap, which means uh, we do not change the tap. We keep the tap position the same and we test on uh, each of those three phases. So A, B and C phase at the same tap and then we change the tap and move on. Uh, if we select the other option, which is test by winding, that would mean that the order in which the connections or order in which the measurements appear in the table would be um, by winding. So the phase uh, would be the same for consecutive rows and the tap position would change from one value to the other. So uh, we are expected to use the test by winding settings if you're testing on a winding which has an LTC where we want to uh, keep the current flowing through the circuit and we want to test each tap uh, from one extreme to the other on each phase, right? So test by winding is the preferred selection. If we are testing on a winding which has an LTC, test by tap is the preferred selection if you are testing on a winding which has a DTC or if you are taking measurements at a single tap. Reversed order for next connection applies to test by winding. Uh, if you are testing on a winding which has an LTC and we are running the test by winding, then we can check this option. We can enable reversed order for next connection and that will basically reverse the order uh, for the middle phase uh, as well as for the C phase so that it's easier for us to run through um, the tap change operation. The auto stop or stability criteria uh, pertain to the uh, auto stop option that, that we mentioned earlier. Um, so if the auto stop is enabled, then the uh, tracks will automatically stop the test and save the measurement based on what it's uh, based on whether uh, when the stability criteria are met. Here we have a stability threshold, which is at 99.9% .9 and the stability time is set at five seconds, which means that the tracks will stop the test when it sees that the reading has reached a level of 99.9% .9 stability and has stayed that way for five seconds. Here we have, a section, uh, we have a section for temperature correction and that is grayed out and that's because the temperature correction is disabled here. If the temperature correction is enabled, then you can select uh, the, the winding material over here and that way make sure that the temperature correction is correctly applied to the readings. You have three options for winding materials. There is aluminum and copper, which are the common uh, conductors that are used. And there is a third custom option in case you want to go with something else. To run a winding resistance test using the 16 amp DC source, we would need a pair of Kelvin cables. Let's start off the test by running measurements on the low voltage winding. So we'll start off with the A phase of the low voltage winding. Here on this slide, you can see the connection diagram for the A phase. The first step is to connect the ground lead from the track's main unit to the grounding pad on the tank of the transmer under test. When I select the winding resistance app, I can see that the LEDs for the appropriate input and output light up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Kelvin cables and connect the measure ends of the Kelvin cables on the input, the R1 input, and I'm going to take the power ends or the generator ends of the Kelvin cables and connect them on the 16 amp output. 
Then I take those Kelvin cables and connect them on the XO and X1 bushing. I'm going to select the low voltage winding and I'm going to select the 16 amp DC source. I'll enter a test current of 3 amps and I'm going to start the test. When I start the test, the current will be injected into the winding and you can see the stability level of the reading. The stability level rises and once the stability level is maintained about 99.9% for a period of five seconds, the instrument deems the reading as stable and it stops the test and saves the measurement. To test the B phase, I'm going to move the red Kelvin cable over to the X2 bushing. I'm going to start the measurement on the B phase by hitting the play button. Current of 3 amps is now injected into the middle phase and I will see the resistance value appear and the stability value appear. Again it wait, waits for a period of 5 seconds and then discharges. Now to test the C phase I'm going to move the red Kelvin cable over to the X3 bushing. So I'm going to start the measurement on the C phase by hitting the play button. As the measurement starts, you can see that in addition to the resistance value and the stability value, you can also see a per stage variation value. This value is supposed to be typically within 2% for power transformer windings. I'm going to save the test data. If I haven't done any measurements prior to this, it's going to ask me to save the file itself. So I'm going to enter a name there and save the file. The file name appears at the top of the screen once it's saved. Now to test the high voltage winding, I'm going to move the Kelvin cables over to the uh, high voltage bushings. I'm going to connect the red cable on the H1 bushing and the black cable will go on the H3 bushing. These are the connections for the A phase of the high voltage winding. Now to move over to the high voltage winding on the software, I'm going to select the high voltage winding. It gives me a message saying that you need to create a new test to start with the high voltage winding. I'm just going to say yes and it brings up the screen for the high voltage winding resistance. I'm going to change the generator to 1 amp, change the test current to 0 0.1 amp. Uh, we're going to keep the current low for, for this particular winding. I'm going to select tab 3 uh, because we are testing this on tab 3 of the high voltage winding and I'm going to hit the play button to start the test on the A phase. You can see 0 0.1 amps is being injected into the winding and you can see the resistance being measured there. Once the reading is stable enough for a certain period of time, it discharges and the reading gets saved. To test on the B phase, I'm going to connect the red cable on the H2 bushing and the black cable on the H1 bushing. Now I'm going to start the measurement on the B phase. Zero point one amps is injected into the B phase of the high side winding. You can see that the re the resistance drops slowly down to the final value. The reading has reached stability. After five seconds, the tracks discharges and save the measurement. To test the C phase. I'm going to take the red Kelvin cable and connect it on the H3 bushing. The black cable goes on the H2 bushing. Now I'm going to run the final winding resistance measurement on the C phase. 0 0.1 amp now 
you can see the percentage variation appear on the last column there. The measurements are complete for the high voltage winding. I'm going to save the data. And I'm going to move over to the demagnetization screen since we are done with the winding resistance test. The demagnetization needs to be done on the middle phase of the high voltage winding. So I'm going to make the connections on H2 and H1 bushings. On the demagnetization screen, you can see the resistance for the middle phase of the high voltage winding. You hit the play button, the process starts, it should take a few seconds. The remnants value of the flux should go down at the end of the process. So that completes the demagnetization process. Now I can, uh, to look at the test results, I can access the test report over there. It asks me, do you want to save changes? I'm just going to say yes. And I can look at the report here. It shows me the test winding resistance test results and the demonetization readings. This concludes how to run a winding resistance test using a TRAX without a TSX303. Visit the Megger YouTube channel for more videos, including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.